hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here from Porky's Corner. Today we've got a special guest live from Essex. It's Mickey Theo, a.k.a. Mickey Theo. <laughs> how are you doing, Mick? I'm good. Can I ask you a question, Mick? I'm all right. Can I ask you a question? You want to ask me one question or loads of questions? Loads of questions, but the first Come on in. Is, have you seen John Fury anywhere? Because the silence is deafening. Do you know what? I was going to ask you the same question, but no. you beat me to it. No one's seen him. I, I mean, I put the, the feelers out. No one's seen him. I think he's 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 in, he's in a little. I think he's hiding with the foxes or the chickens. Like I said, in the in the in the lame chicken uh, den. Um, yeah. Well, I've got a message here for anybody out there. If you're in the Manchester area, check bus depots, check train stations, check the Manchester Canal, check Manchester Airport, check rowing boats at Blackpool or Morecambe going out to sea because he could be, he could be in a rowing boat laid down or check motorways M62. He could be trying to slip out of the country in back of a Ford Granada. But check them yeah. all. He's always going up there M62, isn't he? <laughs> but. John doesn't appear to want the fight, Mick, so we're going to have to go into Plan C now, aren't we? Plan C, definitely. Plan Watch C. out, Manchester, you've got something coming. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to look for it, it'll be in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about your, your bodybuilding career then, Mick. What were the lowest body weight you got down to body fat? Do you know what, uh, Russ? I, I never counted my body fat. I never counted. I never weighed my food like a lot of it then did. I don't see the point. I go by mirror. Um, obviously, you know, you, you lose so much fat, um, and uh, obviously, then you start seeing serrate. When you start seeing serrations, you know your body fat's down. You know, and then you, you pinch yourself sometimes. See how thin you are, and uh, you can see your veins popping out because underneath that. But you got you got your muscle, then you got your, your, your veins, and then you know you got your skin. You've got um, a few of them popping out on your arms, haven't you, Mick? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Um, my body fat's never been really heavy duty, as to say. I mean, off season, I used to bulk. I used to eat anything back in the day. And you know what? I wasn't mad about supplements and and, and protein powders back in. The day. I was just a big eater. You know, it was all about eating. And um, listen, back in the day. Don't have to hide the fact, you know, you competition, you're up against, you know, big guys, people are on gear. When I say gear steroids, you know, so, yeah. you know, I was on them. I would never deny it. You know, it was my, the game I was in. Okay. Um, but they were taking every supplement going, every amino gas going. I never really went into all that. Um, I suppose if I took the aminos and, and all the supplements and, you know, the B12s, be this, be But I got mine out of food, you know. I, I wasn't chemistry involved in in, in, the, in all that packing tab. You know, when I say tablets, vitamins, minerals, and knocking these shakes back every day. You know, I don't, to be honest, I'd have a shake after training. It was nice. And then that would lead me up to dinner, you know. So after training, we used to have a protein shake, get changed, get showered. By the time we get the calf at the road from where the gym was, um, and this guy done amazing food. He done a mixed grill, and it was the plate was like that, fully loaded. We used to polish that up, and then off, and then we used to go for a nice dessert. Yeah, we used to eat. We, I think we got we, we gained all our nutrients through our food, yeah. But I think we used to we used to just eat anything back in the day. Well, I did anyway. Hence, a lot of bodybuilders used to weigh their food, and we were scared to eat food. You know what I mean? My idea of um, or bulking was eat anything off season, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to jump on the scale and see, see him go up, really. Which, in a way, I suppose, now I look at it, if I, if I kept lean body and ate properly and, you know, not mixed grills, you know, have ch chicken, jacket potatoes and rice, you know, all the nice foods, mm -hmm. clean foods, I don't know whether it would help me move forward more, more, um, um, I don't know, more dense muscle or what. But that's, that's the road I took and it worked for me. I was powerful. I was probably the strongest dude who got, got, got in the gym. I used to bench six, seven hundred, uh, six, seven plates a side. Um, no problem. I was strong on an incline as well. Um, I used to squat eight plates a side, eight, eight 20 kilos uh, on each side, plus the bar, um, just to wrap up the uh, knee bands. Eight, 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 eight on each? Eight, 20 kilos each that's side. 340 kilos, isn't it, with collars? So that's and, and, and the bar is, uh, I don't know, 
20. Well, that's including about vast 20 kilo, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I should do that for about 10 reps. I mean, it was, there was a guy that was quite strong. He, he, he done, and he wrote it on the, on the board where the mirror was. There was a bit of a wood there. Um, I forgot his name. He put his name up there. Uh, three reps, eight plates. I went in there. Bosh, 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 bosh. Ten reps. I went crisscross. Mick Fio, ten reps, uh, eight plates. And no one beat that. You topped it then, the Mick, didn't you? I used, to bench, I used to bench press behind the neck, four plates. Curl three plates, you know, uh, bent over rowing six plates. Yeah, it was all about power for me back then, and that's what built the, the muscle, then, basically. And then, after you know, when you're cutting down for a show, you, you get into different workouts, you know, super reps, sets, reps, and cardio, and all that. But then you go on a diet, start chipping off bits of food, you know. First, you cut your sugars off, then you cut this off, then you cut that off, and you just basically cutting things off your meals and then up in your cardio and hence that's how you lose the weight so what do you do not checking that? potatoes and butter on them and cottage cheese and all that that your missus was doing last night <laughs> <laughs> and then and then what a bottle of wine yeah yeah weekend yeah. didn't it yeah 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 but anyway listen it's, it's, it's you, you can diet you know i still i still look up look after myself Monday and Friday, I, I'm quite strict. And weekends, I have what I want. You need it. Your body needs it, you know? Yeah. Uh, what I was going to say to you, mate, you know, your last couple of weeks? Yeah. Uh, in dieting, what do you eat? The last couple of weeks? Yeah, hardly anything. Oh, before I show you, mean? Yeah. Um, the last couple of weeks? No. Funny enough, when you're on a diet, the diet we do and the training we do and the cardio we do, we do two, three hours a day cardio. You eat more food than when you when you when you're off season. Yeah. But like clean food. And because you're eating clean and you're doing all the cardio, it just goes through you. Yeah. So yeah, we don't cut our food out. We fact we're more hungrier when you're on a diet. Sometimes I've eaten five, six times a day, and I get just before I go to bed, I'm getting hungry. So I'll, I'll whack up a, a, a bowl of porridge with, with water, you know? Yeah. Um and do that before I go to bed. Um, and yeah, you know, because you're hungry all the time. Yeah. But, you know, your body's hungry for the junk. You know, it wants that junk. It wants, you know, all the cheese and crackers and all that. And cakes and... And come, come, uh, come like, uh, I don't know, a week before your show, you're hallucinating on all these foods you've got to eat after the show. Yeah? Yeah. Get the show out of the way with a good result. And then, like you, you pick out, and you, know, you can't, you pick out, you can't eat anymore. And then maybe you'll have, I don't know, if you're lucky, you do the next day, and you just get fed up with it, and you just balloon up. You know, you put so much weight on in two, three days. You know, your body expands. It's just like a wharf with all that food. It really pumps it out. But a lot of bodybuilders, what they do before shows, is carb up, yeah. And people are scared to carb up, yeah. They stay, they stay flat and they're not pushing out the muscle and stretching the skin more, yeah, and giving that potential what they should be doing. And this is where they get... They, I messed up one year. I was meant to be up against Dorian Yates. He's heavyweight. I went to light heavy because I messed me, me diet up. And he was a bit conscious that I was going to be there and I'm going to be against him and I'm going to be a hard man to beat. And he's done a few good write-ups about me, Dorian. But we're still good friends today anyway. Um, and I messed up that year and I dropped down to light heavyweight and I was flat. But... A lot of people after a show, they eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. You can't put fat on for three days anyway, you know? But it's just a mental thing they have in their head. If I put that on, I want to smooth out, I ain't going to look right, so they're scared. Yeah. But the person's not scared to eat. If they pig out the day before, oh, they look phenomenal the next day. Phenomenal. Yeah. It's all that food that your body's craving for, which uses it, you know? Because you're having a good pump up backstage, you, you know, you train, you're having a workout to pump, get the blood in them uh, muscles and pump them up. You know, that's what you're doing. You know, these, come out. It's fucking hard work. <laughs> you know these bodybuilder, these bodybuilder fellas make, that lift big weights and that. Why do they walk around in tracky bottoms that look like jammers? Because they can't get any uh, the trousers to fit the legs or jeans. Oh, is that why? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, I was the same. I used to wear Timberland boots, yeah, and walk around with like crazy wear track suits, yeah? yeah, the funny ones like you say, and low cut socks and all that. You could never get any food, any clothes to fit you. All my stuff was made to measure. Yeah, it's nice, you know. Now I've come down a lot of weight to walk in somewhere and put get a pair of jeans 
even a designer pair of jeans to fit you. You know what I mean? Um, before, forget it. I had a question, mate. Timberland boots, big white socks tucked inside your trackies. We were like barbarians in the days, you know. We used to train with bandanas, you know, the do rags. Um, oh, God. Go on. You, do you remember the barbarians? Yeah, the, the barbarian twins, weren't they? Yeah, they were my idols, you know. I used to look up to them. I love the way they dress. I used to dress like them a little bit, you know, with boots and all sorts. Yeah. But in that film, oh. aren't they? We, uh, Matt Dillon, they, they play a part in that film where he's a card shark. Is it the, the summit kid or summit? Not Cincinnati kid. I ain't seen it for years, but I, I must dig it out. I used to love them. They were great guys. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, moving on then, Mick, from uh, your bodybuilding days to obviously you're now involved in various businesses and that, aren't you? A car wash business. Mm -hmm. You do tyres, brakes, and all that at a garage as well, don't you? And yeah. Rent land out and all that kind of thing, don't you, and stuff? Yeah. Uh, what made you start dealing in Bentleys? <clears throat> uh, I don't specifically deal with them direct. Uh, you know, oh, this is, it's what you can buy in the auction. Hence, you buy it, but you buy it at a right price. Yeah. Um, I've always had a Bentley around with you, Mosher. Yeah. Um, since, listen, since 1985, like I said to you before, I think. Um, I've always had one around me, or half decent motor around me, you know. Um, yeah, I, I get fed up with it, and I'll sell it, you know. That sort of half personally car, and then, I, you know, they're all set to sell, and you get out of that one, you think you try something else, and you try that, and you try this, and you just get me, I end back in a Bentley to brush out, because I think they're just an all-round car. Um, you know, so, you know, it's good. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah. All right. Well, why? Obviously, I can't understand why you want to put. I don't know what you pay for these Bentleys, but the markup on it must be good. But why don't you buy twenty cars for what you pay for a Bentley and have twenty cars for sale, and then just pay Listen, I, I, I say that to most dealers who sprush it out in one car. If I buy a Bentley or a, a Roller or something up that end, yeah. It's got to be a big profit for me to buy it. Otherwise, I won't buy it. I won't buy it with like Paco car auctions. And there's dealers that have been in the game for a long, long time, a lot longer than me. And they're like splashing out, for instance, maybe 20, 30 grand or 40 grand. Yeah. To make five grand. Three to five, yeah. But they won't get the five because they'll, they'll have it on the forecourt trying to be greedy. They'll have it there for a month or two months. Then they'll reduce it and then reduce it again. And then reduce it. And then they'll end up with like a grand. When, like you say, you can buy 20 cars and get 20 profits. Twenty, You get 20 grand out of them 20 cars well, all day long. People ask me all the time about motor industry because it's what I used to do. But... That's what I do, Russ. What you just said is what I do. I'd buy, I'd buy 10 or 20 cars and get, you know, um, a bread and butter cars, affordable cars for people, yeah? Well, the, and The bread and butter cars is like your, your Nissan, your Japanese stuff and your German stuff, isn't it, mate? Nissan. Bread and butter cars, people can come with a bit of cash, a bit of credit card or whatever, or even a bit of finance. You move them quicker than you do the big cars, you know? What's Unless you put that big car out there, cheaper than everyone else, you ain't going to sell it, you know? Once you sell um, one car, mate, you can peel a wage off it, put it to one side, and then you go get another one. Take a wage off it and go re replace better off, it. You've got 20 assortment cars instead of one, and you've got 20 profits. That's what I say to people all the time. And that's what I do, mainly. I don't really... Uh, specialise in the top end because you, you just sit there's lumps of money sitting out there could have, what, to could have a Bentley five months my mate was selling one for nine months yeah. and he bailed out and I think he broke even on it so he never earned out for nine months on that car well like I said to you the last one I got over to Man just outside Man between Manchester and Liverpool it was um, and I bought it up there yeah. and the guy was the guy was driving me up there he goes, he goes your face is very familiar anyway I said yeah you you heard about the fight with John Fury, and he said, oh, I thought it was you, and then went up the garage, he told your brother, nice guys up there, you know, just outside Liverpool they were. Um, so if you guys are watching this 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 film, this film or this this, this YouTube, uh, hello from me, and, you know, thanks for the deal, we had a great deal, the car's fantastic, and, yeah, it's up for sale, and uh, we'll see what happens still. All right then, Mick, uh, moving on then, what did you think to Luke Campbell's performance against Ryan Garcia? Not great. No. I thought, I thought he started off good. Um, I didn't see the complete fight, but um, listen, it takes one shot in boxing, and that's the shot. You know what I mean? Um, it's like a you know a two three second pause, and and then you go down. You know, 
Yeah. Everyone, everyone seems to go for the head all the time in boxing. The majority of boxers, you know, but that's that body shot, mate. You can't, you can't beat it. You yeah. know, it just completely does you in. Yeah, yeah. It just shocks the body. It shocks the. It, it travels up your spine and just tells your brain something, and it it travels back down, um, and then that's it. It's game over. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, listen, he's up and coming, Garcia. He's doing well. Um, he's calling out the other fella now, and he um, maybe of his youngster. Um, what's his name? The off cast guy, Davis. That, yeah, he, I think he's a phenomenal fighter. That Davis, yeah, he's a he, listen. He, I think I personally think he would take Garcia. My money's on, on him, yeah. Where are we with the bets anyway? I'll okay. probably owe you loads, right. <laughs> I think you. I think you. I think you. Oh, are, you bend the money down. I think you're down the tour, aren't you, Mick? <laughs> don't be like that. Oh, I'll be right, man. We'll double it up on another bet. It's, there's no worries. I don't have money off me pals. Right, uh, but I will off you, Mick, because you've got a few quid. <laughs> we'll build it up, Mick, till we get up to a thousand quid. Then I'll give it you back and say you shouldn't bet when you're a casual, Mick. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think is going to win between Billy Joe and Callum Smith if they fight? If they fight, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Would you like to see it, mate? Yeah, I'd love to see it. Like I said before, I think a couple of shot, um, weeks ago, uh, that would be a great fight to see. That or Eubanks for Billy. Or um, who was the, like the other fellow we, we said that would be good to fight him? Um, before Canelo, that was, wasn't it? Getting them fights on before Canelo. Yeah, uh, yeah that'd be a good fight. That'd be that'd be hard. That'd be a, that'd be a hard slog out for both of them. I think. Yeah. They're both they're both great, still great fighters. You know what I mean? I mean, unfortunately, you know, he's done his shoulder, and I think and he, I can't remember what he said—the shoulder, or his, or his hand, or his wrist, or something. But that that'd be a, that'd be a great fight for Bill. Yeah, I, I'd, 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 I'd like to do another fight before he went to Canelo because he's had a bit of time out and now he's just getting back in the ring. And I, I think he knows himself. Another fight, just just a little build up towards Canelo. Um, yeah, and he'd be all right. Bill's in, in, in and out fight, I hit, you know. He just, he, he fights good. Listen, take my out to him. You know, he's a good fighter. He moves in right and gets out of the right. It's, it's all about not getting hit and, hit and, and not getting hit. And, which is uh, when you're up against someone that's sharp, you 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 become more sharper yourself, I believe, because you know the guy can can have it, and you know you don't want to get in the way of him. So, so you box. It's all called it's called boxing. And I think Joshua is going down that road now, trying to go down that road, but he's I don't think he, he's 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 that type of boxer. If you know what I mean, but Joshua was normally a guy who moves forward and goes for the kill when he could. But now the level's stepping up and he's finding it a bit harder now and he's scared to get involved now, you know? He's still hesitating. He's still worried about he knows he can go down with a punch. Um, but listen, when you get to heavyweight stage, we just look, look at two heavyweights coming to crash, don't we? You know? And, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I agree, mate. Uh, all right, then. Boxing, obviously, has took a... Bit of a turn for the worst in the last 11 months because of the pandemic and stuff like that. Do you think it's going to recover, Mick, or do you think it could be like this for another year? Well, at the moment, it looks like it's going that way, looking worse for boxing. Until we come out of this, you know, this pandemic, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. Um, I should call it COVID-2021, COVID you know, COVID-21. I think we've gone from the 19 to the 20. Now it should be a 21, eh? COVID-21. Yeah. Um, so, um, honestly, I think it's going to drag on till uh, middle of next of this year. Um, possibly heading that to the, you know, September, October next year. I don't know. And then, you know, I think we might have a break in the summer when it's hot. It heats up a bit because, you know, the germs live in the cold and not the heat. So I think when, when the weather starts getting a bit more warmer, and uh, more milder, I, I believe um, we'll start. It'll start letting people out, thinking it's all you know. It's nice now. There's less germs around and cold to get the germs. Because listen, we all get colds and flu in the winter when it's cold, don't we? Everyone's got a snotty nose or whatever, and nose running and flued up and whatever. 
it's just normal. But this thing's come out and it's really, it, it, it's, it's blasting people away, you know, for good. And uh, if, you're, if you're the lucky one, you get out of it, you know. And again, well done to Stuart Livermore, you know. Strong guy, fought it and come out of it. There's a lot of people, even she was told me, the guy, there was an old boy next to him, you know, he passed away. And uh, he, he got quite familiar with this guy and, uh, you know, it just fucking hit him, broke his heart. Um, you know, I see old men pass away, someone, you know, that's got a family out there, yeah. got kids, not allowed to see them because of the virus, you know. Yeah. Dad. So there's that part of life as well, you know. Um, so thank God whoever's still around and, and, and don't have the, the, the symptoms, you know, keep masked up, keep clean, and, uh, you know, just stay, stay safe, everyone. Do you still go for a breakfast with Dominic Neger, so have you had to cancel it because it rises? No, we're, we're obviously, because the caps are shut now, aren't they? But we're doing a, um, a podcast on that uh, Decker, that Decker show. Um, Sometime in the next few weeks, um, he's uh, invited us up to do to, to do a podcast with him. We, we're a joint podcast with um, um, Dominic Negus. So um, we've got that coming up. Um, I've not heard of him. Where's he from, Mick? I think he's that from New. I think he's from Newcastle, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. In fact, I, I, I think I'll. I'll um, I'll get Dominic on, on your show. We'll do a joint one for you as well. Uh, that'd be nice. Hear, hear both stories. Yeah, I uh, could ask him about when he fought Audley Harrison. Come you know on. him anyway, yeah. You know Dominic anyway. I've met him before at shows. Yeah, he's tried yeah, to... He's, he's, he's a great time. lad. He's a great lad. Uh, very close friend of mine. Uh, bringing our third book out now. Um, he, had, he had the lows and, and then, then, then there was... Um, then he sort of... At, from, from the down to, to the up and even what beyond now the third book's going to be. I don't know how you get names, but uh, yeah, he's got, he's got a lot, a, a lot of went through in his life, Dominic. Um, great guy, great friend of mine. Uh, true warrior and a great fighter, um, you know. So Dominic, uh, if you listen to this, pick up Dominic Negus and look forward to seeing you in the next few weeks to do the podcast and we'll get you on with Porky's channel. How's uh, Noel doing? Noel's great, yeah, he's doing all right. Uh, he's put a few things out on Instagram and he about cooking now. He can't do the gym, so he's doing the cooking instead. So he's learning to do spaghetti bolognese. He, I see it on Instagram the other day. He had the meat, but done with the uh, onions and all that. And then he had the sauces. He had the pasta cooking as well. Um, last few times I see he's come out and he's um, he started cooking now. You know, he's never cooked in his life before. That's good to cook, you know. It's good to know to uh, do a recipe, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, what fights would you like to see in 2021, mate? From your your, give me five fights that you would like to see. Uh, well, look, everyone wants to see the um, Joshua fight and uh, Fury. Um, everyone wants to see it, but we know the result. I believe Fury's going to fly past him. Um, honestly, I'd like to see Fury. And um, Deontay Wilder trilogy, I think that will happen before um, Joshua's fight because there's a legal battle going on still, and I think he will have to fight him. Um, because I still believe that, um, you know, he wasn't right that day, Deontay Wilder. Um, that night he came out, he wasn't right. Uh, forget getting caught on the side of the head, which you know, rocked him a bit, and it really did rock him. I think it was an eardrum injury he had, which is lose your balance. So I believe he's a dangerous fighter. If he comes back, he could do damage. Um, you know, because if you look at the first fight, yeah, how, how he fought, and then you look at the second fight, the third fight was completely out of, out of the ordinary for, for Deontay. He wasn't himself. Um, Do you mean the second fight? The second fight, sorry. He wasn't himself, was he? Yeah, but isn't that Tyson Fury's job to make it so he's not himself and punch his ears? True. Up? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But he did, you know. He, but listen, what I'm saying, Russ, I, I don't... Well, you, you, have you done he done his sparring in the gym, gym before? I don't know. Yeah, whether you've done. Ago, yeah. yeah? Yeah, a long time ago, yeah. Okay. 
there's some days you get in there and you cannot switch it on. You cannot, whatever, you, you know, your trainer's telling you or your friend's telling you outside the ring, it's just not happening. And you do get them days. And to get it on the night of your, of your, of your main event, it, it's, it cripples you. Your, your mind's not there. You, 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 it's just not with it. You can't perform. You can't switch it on. And getting a bash on the side of the year as well, you know, um, didn't help. I don't believe the suit was heavy and all that bollocks he's coming out with. That's just an excuse. But, um, you know, he's always wore a heavy suit coming in, so that's never been a problem. But listen, John Taylor is still a dangerous man. Um, and I believe that um, if Tyson can get out of not fighting him, he'd be better for him because he's, he's still a danger. He's a danger knockout. You see what he can do. I think John T goes for the knockout all the time. He don't go for the points. He just goes for the big, the big KO. You can see the way he fights. Um, you know, his early days, he was a swinger, the biggest swinger in town, wasn't it? <laughs> he was just swinging everywhere. Biggest swinger in town, yeah. He was. That's what he used to swing, you know. He's just... That's why they call him Wilder. He was a wild cat, you know. And then he calmed it down. He started to move and jab, move and jab, and he was he was getting better. And I thought, wow, this guy can start the box now, you know. But he used to go out like that uh, That young, um, what's his name? I can never think of his name. Bald dead, the swinger. Oh, Hagler. What's his name? I mean, Hagler. No, no, no. The latest guy that fought um, um, on, on, on Warren, um, on Thingy Show, Eddie Show. Oh, uh, Babic. Babic. You can never get his name out, yeah? I can he used to be like Babic. Wilder, though, mate. Come on. Huh? How can we put Bobby Kim bracket with Wilder, man? He's garbage. No, I'm mean, talking about the way he swings. Oh, yeah, he's, he comes but, out, yeah, looking to take him out straight away. Yeah, that's how that's how young used to be, but fast. You know, he was fast, and he's got that long reach, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 So, but, okay, that's one fight with... Um, uh, Tyson and Wilder, you'd like to see. It's the third one, yeah? Yeah, you've got Tyson Wilder, and then I think you should, then it's going to be, um, obviously, Joshua, if Joshua still uh, holds the belts, if anyone does upset them. Yeah. It's all about upsetting someone. You know, it's all, we all want to see the fight, but if he has to fight, step in with Wilder again, he may lose, number one, okay? Um, and that would that would mess the fight, the main event up for him. Uh, it can happen either way. Uh, Joshua can get in with a dangerous opponent and, and get caught, and it's just, it's just heavyweight boxing. Yeah. Um, Billy Joe would be either with, um, I'd like to see him fight Eubanks Jr. Um, or Callum Smith. Was it Callum Smith we were talking about? Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, I'd like yeah, to see yeah. fight. That would be a good fight. Um, in fact, that's the one for Billy, I think. Or Eubanks. Them two would, would, would turn on watch, yeah. I'd, I'd enjoy it. Either one of them fights. I think I'd, I'd enjoy it more with Eubanks because Eubanks has got that... He's got that that look, the the he, like he's not heard before. He's trying to be what his dad was, and he never become one. But he's getting there. Listen, great fighter. I just think that 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 would that would go good. Them two fight just to prove it. Yes, he is the number one guy, Billy. You know what I mean? Um, but he's dangerous. Um, he hasn't really done much either, ladies. Are you, Banks? And then. If that all goes well, Billy will obviously have to go for the Canelo fight. That will definitely, I think, will happen. Uh, but a stepping stone before that would be great for him. Um, obviously, the, the 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 fight I just spoke about, Garcia, with um, um, I can't think of his name. Terrible names with uh, um, Mayweather's kid. Uh, that be that be great fight. Um, Javante Davis, you mean? Yvonne Davis. I think he's a ma he, he's mustard. He is. Oh, he's, he's amazing. I think Anthony Broner's is coming back as well, isn't he? Anthony Broner. He, Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner. Uh, he's coming back out. I was see something on thingy the other day. He's, I think he, he said he retired and he's, he's coming back in the boxing and now he wants to have a few more fights before he, he actually retires. Um, he's skint, isn't he? He's what? In. Is he? I don't know. He's earned a few quid over the years, hasn't he? No, he's he's got about ten kids, hasn't he? And court cases and tax bills to pay and all that. Apparently, he's skint. I've been told. Really? Not skid Row. Chinese wristers, I think. Well, four weight world champion. 
uh, he's always got legal problems, hasn't he? And there's always some sort of issues with him, isn't there? He's, he's like uh, somebody that you can't put your money on, if you know what I mean. You don't know what Broner's going to turn up here at sometimes when he fights. Talking about uh, Amir Khan fighting... Um, Kel Brook, what do you think to that? Kel. Yeah, that'd be a good fight. I've, yeah, that'd be a good fight to watch. You think they might be past the sell-by date, mate? No, I think they're on the level. They're on the levels. I think they'll be all right to get with them too. Yeah, but are, are they yeah. past their sell-by dates? Their own sell-by well, date. They're in, they're, they're, they've actually gone down the road. And they're, they're levels of what I mean. The one ain't above the other. I don't believe at the moment. I think it's an even fight. You mean because the, the damage they've took over years? They're not that bad though. They, they haven't really come out of any damage. Have they? Well, Kel Brook's been, he's been knocked out three times and he's been hurt yeah, but, the time, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, but getting knocked out, I don't think it does your damage, does no. it? Well, Kel Brook got his, uh, in, his eye sockets smashed in and cheekbones, didn't he, in both fights. So the third time he got hit, he turned away, didn't he? So it had a mental effect for him, didn't it, don't you think? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah. And Amir Khan's been put out cold a few times, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, but he, he loves going on the campus, doesn't he? Amir Khan's been a professional 17 years. Do you think that's a bit long, Mick? Listen, if, if, like I say, it's all inside. If you've got it inside to do it, get out and do it, you know? And yeah. That's what I believe. Yeah. Whether the head can take it or not, you know? Yeah. Um, you've got to train it to take it, isn't it? So, yeah. Where do we... Where are we on the situation with you and John Fury? It, we ob obviously we know that there's a venue. I'm not going to say venue, but I know there's a venue set aside. There's a, a, a platform streaming service set aside, isn't there? And there's you, uh, you, you know we got everything, Russ. You yeah, know, I'm just I'm, I know I'm trying to narrate the story here. So yeah, 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 we got everything set set aside. So there's got, there's a platform to have it in. There's there's there's, uh, there's a streaming. We we got uh, we got we got filming people. We got everything. I'm just, um, once, it's all, once, once, once he says, yes, I'll fight you, Mickey Fio, we'll get contract signed, we'll do it properly, we'll get him on your show, um, a face-off on a Zoom, and we'll move forward, and uh, yeah, we'll do it in a month. So a little what, bit of publicity. So what are we waiting for then, Mick? Are we waiting for John to come out and say, I don't want to fight you, or let's get it on. Is that what we're waiting for, a yes or no? Before you can... Well, we're, we're, not waiting for, we're not waiting for him to say, no, I'm not going to fight you. We're waiting for him to say, I want to fight you and I want to do it for a good cause and I'm, I'm, I'm there with you. Yeah. yeah. So all it is is a challenge. That's all we're saying. It's a challenge. So basically, you're accepting his challenge for the over 50s to fight John Fury because he did challenge over 50-year-old men, didn't he? Well, yeah. If you say you're the best... fit, Because what he said was, I believe I'm the best 54-year-old on the planet. Yeah, you know, and that that is basically saying, "Listen, I'm here. Whoever wants it, come and fight me." Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I didn't start, you know. I didn't dig at him and you know have, pull him up and have any grief towards him. I thought, you know what? Oh, I fancy that because I believe I'm better, and that's it. Straightforward. Um, and uh, listen, like I said before, not many people would have fight would, would even challenge your fury. You know. Um, Will they? Because I don't know. Maybe they're scared. Do you think Maybe they got, a, they got the heart. I've got it, everything. Do you think it's shit house behaviour, mate, from John not to? You know what? It's it's it, it is a bit too much. So let's cut all the bullshit to one side. I think it is. He's acting like a kid. Um, basically, he should get up like a man and say what he's got to say, yes or no. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing harder. It, you know, it's. It, it's takes a man to do that and maybe he's not a man you know well, um, that's probably the problem at the moment he, we got you know he's not a man he don't have the courage to say that because he you know he just it's not it's not within him um, and you know he is what he is and we've just got to wait and see let nature take its place see if the guts can get a bit stronger to say or come out and fight you know you know what means Hey, do you know if we get to April and it's like a year since the first the original call out and you're accepting it, when we get to that year point and it looks like and it it looks like John's still not interested in fighting you, would you be interested in fighting anybody over fifty, or do you just want to fight John? Um, 
I've always wanted. Well, it started off because well, what John said that day. Now I don't. I don't go out looking for fights with anyone, or even getting the ring for them. But I think about. I fancy this. Just something grabbed hold of me. Said, you know what? I know I'm better than him. Yeah. And it's always been that like that. Yeah. And then so and it's gone so big out of there. Well, I've shocked myself to be honest. Yeah. You know, so many people ringing up and ringing me and this and that. And it's. I see it on American television here, there, I see it everywhere. Yeah, it's gone worldwide, viral. It's very big. And and I, what I did say, it, we'll do it for Jerry, you know, because we was in a pandemic. So, and we're in a bigger, uh, a double whammy at the moment. So it's even better what's, not better with what's happening in the world, but it's still there and it's more, it's more a uh, stronger uh, virus that is out there, I believe, uh, than the first one. So, what a great cause we've been doing it for. I mean, you're getting these idiots with masks on saying, I'll oh, calm down, I'll oh, fucking do this, and I'll oh, fucking do that. You yeah, fuck, I didn't go for one, young one. We ain't going to raise no money with him, are we? Yeah. We ain't going to raise no more money with a, a normal pod that wants to get in the ring. Yeah? yeah. This is about raising money for a good cause. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Listen, I can have a tear up. I'll go outside the door now and find a tear up, find a tear up, you know? Yeah. What's going to happen? Old Bill get called, get nicked. Yeah. But this has gone so big, I suppose, because John's a big celebrity out there in the boxing world. John is a big, um, I say a lot of people worship John. They don't even know him. Yeah. Look up to him as he's the king. Yeah. He's X rated man. He's the man. John Fury's the man. Well, if he's the man, and I say this now, so all you John Fury supporters and arse lickers and worshippers, tell him to come out and fight me and prove he's the man. Yeah? Because I don't believe he's the man. Simple. Yeah? So all you arse lickers that rate John Fury, I don't rate him. I reckon I can beat him. Okay? So get him out. Tell him to come and fight me and prove his point. Yeah? I might be wrong. He might be the main man. He might be the daddy. But listen, mate. Come and prove it to me. Yeah. That's it. That's all we're asking for. Be a man. Come on the channel. Let's move forward with this. Let's do it for lovely calls. All you ass stickers, stop making funny phone calls to Porky and other people because you've got fuck what else better to do. Excuse my French. Just look after yourself, behave yourself, keep your mask on, and stay out of trouble. That's all I'm asking you lot. Yeah. Mouthy, loud mouths. Stop making friendly phone calls, yeah? Got nothing to do with you. It's a challenge between two grown men. All right, all Paul he's doing is, 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 is his channel. That's his bread and butter. That's his work, yeah? And his hobby as well. So leave it out, yeah? Because you've got nothing else better to do, including you, Mr. Mask Man. Yeah? Stay out of this. It's got nothing to do with anyone. So all you phone calls, What's all you call that guy with gold mask? I forgot his name now. What's he Dilly called? Billy Bollocks. Silly bollocks is his name. Somebody says well, it's not, not a name for him, is it? We're side jack or something. Somebody said, I don't know, I can't remember his name now. Whatever it is, you know, he's got nothing to do with anyone. Yeah, just come out and say you want to fight me, you don't want to fight me. Be a man, okay? The rest of you, shut your mouths, a lot of you. Yeah, or it's two, two ways about it shut your mouths or go and get hold of John Fury, shake him by the fucking head as they. John, lick him, give him a big lick, say, I love you, go and fight Mickey for you, Theo. And that's it. Yeah? yeah? Simple. Don't give it all the large on the phone and the threatens and all the bollocks. He used to ring Taste of Cypress fucking five times a day. Yeah, trying to give it to him. He'd tell you where to go. Don't worry about that. He didn't give a monkey to you lot. But anyway, put all that aside. This is a pure challenge. No grief. No one's got a problem with anyone. And let's not make it a problem and move forward. Yeah? Simple for a good cause. This is all about listen, a massive great cause here. So cut all the bollocks out, move forward, let's do something lovely for the for the whole world, because it's in the world. Yeah. And um change let's change the world. Let's let's just give them a bit more money to help them out and, and move forward. That's all we're doing. That's what I'm doing from here. And I need you, John, to step in and do it with me. And what a lovely thing. Especially what you've been done for in the past, it will take all the shit off your head and move forward, and then people will look up to you in a, in a, in a better way in life. Yeah. Well, John I did say you. John did say on Boxing Social that he wanted to heal the world, didn't he? Other week, so did he? 
Yeah, he said he wanted to heal the world. Oh, on this run, on this run he's doing. I don't know. I that's saw what... it, somebody sent me. It. I said John Fury is going to heal the world. So that's How? good. What running? I don't know. I, I just I don't know. It just said he, he said at end of one of the interviews that people should stay behind doors, listen to government, and I don't know. All the old answers sing we are the world or something. I forget now, but somebody sent me a clip know. of it. Look, it's all good know. PR, isn't it? John loves a bit of PR. John, you've been silent lately, though, haven't you, John? Come on, Porky's Corner, John. Let's have a debate about why you don't want to fight Mickey. Oh, it is what it is. Well, listen, Mick, it's been a pleasure having you on. We can't do any more, Russ. We can't. We can. We can't. We've, got a surprise. We can't. We've got a surprise for Manchester soon, we? We can't. Don't worry about it. We'll get, the, we'll get the fight on, Mick. If not, well, at least we had a go. Really? Yeah, listen, you know, I suppose we can look at it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. All right, then, Mick. Well, listen, thank you very much. All the best for the rest of the weekend. You, you have a you have yeah. a time what's left of the weekend. And yourself, mate. And uh, nice to hear from you again. And I'm glad that you will. And uh, you, you, you know, you should come on next time with a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Porky mask. Anyway, once again, everyone out there, big shout out to everyone. Look, be safe. It is a proper bug out there. I know two people has had it in intensive care, masks on, couldn't breathe. So it is out there. If you don't do what you're told and not wear the mask, and not glove up, or clean your hands, keep clean, it'll come and bite you. Brilliant. And only through you're in hospital, please God, that doesn't happen, you'll, you'll be thinking that Mickey Theo said that, and he was right. Mm. So be safe, everyone. Peace out, and we'll see you soon. Cheers, mate. All the best. Bye. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking.